Chapter 14, The Shooter. Nadine opened her eyes and at first couldn't take in what she was seeing. The other dog was lying up against the posts, a bullet wound in his head. Hawkeye, still lying where he was, was whimpering, trying to get up. Daniel, Ted roared, you little shit, I'm going to have your bloody guts for garters. Nadine turned to see her stepfather striding over to her brothers. Daniel stood beside the motorbike, as she had last seen him, but this time the rifle was in his hands. Nadine looked back at the dog in the ring, and then at her brother again. He'd done it. Her meek and mild brother had shot the dog. Her mouth was dry with fear. This was the last straw. They were all going to be in so much trouble now. The group of men stood aside for Ted, who began to work purposely toward the boys. Stay where you are, Daniel shouted. He had raised the gun and was pointing it at his stepfather. His face was flushed and Nadine could see his chest heaving, even from where she was standing. Nadine could see his hands were shaking. Just then, Martin tried to take the gun off his brother. Stop it, Daniel. You're making things worse, he said. But Daniel shoved him with his shoulder and lifted the gun again. I'm going to waste you, he snarled at Ted. I'm going to fill you full of holes. Nadine could see that his eyes were shining too brightly. This was not the brother she knew. Stay there. Oh, Daniel, she called to him. Daniel, put the gun down. Stay there, Nadine. I'm going to give this bastard what he deserves. <laughs> Nadine looked over at Ted. He had lost some of his power. He put a shaking hand to his forehead. Come on, boy. Don't be foolish. He reached out his hand toward Daniel. Instantly, Daniel lifted the rifle a little higher and put his eye to the sight. I said, stay where you are, Daniel cried, his voice squeaking. I'm not going to let you do any more. What are you talking about, Ted asked, his voice shaking too. Daniel, put the gun down. That's a boy. Come on, son. I'm not your son, Daniel shouted. You're not our father. You can't tell us what to do. Not any more. We hate you, he cried. We hate you, and we wish you were dead. He had begun to cry, but he still kept the gun pointed at Ted. Nadine crept closer. Danny, she said gently, you're right, we do hate him, and we do wish he was dead. But Daniel, if you shoot him, they'll send you away. Put the gun down. Nadine saw him falter, and his arms relaxed slightly. (coughs) But then Ted took another step toward him so that Daniel's grip tightened again. Around them, Nadine sensed the crowd of men, tense and afraid. Even the dogs were silent, although in her subconscious, Nadine was aware of Hawkeye panting. We don't belong here, Daniel. Put the gun down, you idiot. You say you hate him, but if you don't put the gun down, you're just like him. Daniel looked at her and then at Martin. Martin nodded. Put it down, Danny. He's not worth it. Something in the softness of his brother's voice seemed to reach Daniel. With a sob, he lowered the rifle and handed it over to Martin. The moment Martin had the gun, Daniel strode over to Daniel, pulled him around and punched him in the face. Daniel fell to the ground while Ted continued the punishment, kicking him anywhere he could hurt. That'll learn you, you little shit. Teach you to pull a gun on me, he snarled. Ted picked up a stick and swung it towards Daniel, but Brian and others grabbed Ted and dragged him, kicking and swearing away. Then, in that moment of quiet, the sound of police sirens. Ted stopped resisting the men and stepped further back. The look of fear had come back to his face. Nadine ran to her brother and helped him up. She looked up at her stepfather, hatred flooding through her. You're finished, mister. As Nadine said this, two police cars came racing along the track. Cops, someone yelled. 
and within moments the rest of the crowd flew to their cars and trucks leaving Ted, Brian, Martin, Daniel and Nadine and the dogs still standing where they were. One of the police cars spun to a stop and two officers got out. One of the officers had a loudspeaker. Stay where you are, please. Everybody just stay where you are. Surprisingly, all the fleeing men stopped what they were doing. The officers motioned them all to go back to the clearing where Nadine and her family were. With his nose bleeding and his face streaked with tears and dirt, Daniel walked toward the first police car. Before it stopped completely, their mother opened the door and ran toward them. What's happened? Marion asked. Then she saw Ted. What have you done? she demanded. Ted, why are these children here? Ted, his face still clouded with anger, spat at the ground. Ask them why they're here. I didn't bring them. Nadine watched as four officers made their way toward the group. Edward Simmons, the first officer, asked Ted quietly. Who wants to know, replied Ted replied belligerently, Are you Edward Simmons? Simons. The officer asked again, Yes, I need to ask you a few questions. Please accompany me to the station. I haven't done anything wrong, Ted shot back. What do you want me for? I've got nothing to do with this. I was down the back of my farm and I heard all this noise and I came over. I've just got here, he lied. That's not true, called Nadine. She pulled out the book and handed it over to the policeman. This is his. He's got all the people and money and dogs and stuff written down. Ted lunged at her, but the policeman grabbed his arm. Swearing loudly, Ted tried to wrestle off the officer. Another policeman rushed over and helped to hold Ted back. I'll take that, said yet another officer, and Nadine handed him the book very aware of the murderous look on her stepfather's face. She turned back to see where Daniel had gone when Hawkeye barked. Nadine ran over to the pen. Martin, she called, help me get him out. She clambered into the short fence and rushed over to the dog. Hey, boyo, she crooned. What you been doing, eh? Hawkeye licked her hand. There was blood on his tongue in the earth and straw around him was wet and dark. Nadine went to put her hand under Hawkeye's chin, but the dog snapped at her. She jerked her hand away, and as Hawkeye lay down again, she caught sight of a deep hole in his chest. Martin joined her in the ring, and together they lifted Hawkeye out. It was a slow, difficult exercise because the dog was in a lot of pain and kept nipping at them. Martin took off his shirt and tied it around Hawkeye's muzzle so that he couldn't bite them. Then they placed him in Ted's truck. Nadine went to the tray to get a sack to cover Hawkeye as he was trembling and panting. He's in shock, Martin said, and he's bleeding out heaps. Their mother called them. When they came around the side of the truck, they saw that Ted was sitting in the back of the police car. We're going down to the station. You three can go in the other car. But Nadine shook her head. My Hawkeye's really bad. We have to get him to the vet. He'll die. Marion's lips formed a tight line. Sorry, Nadine, this is more important. Get in the car. No, I won't lose him now. Let me and Martin take him to the vet, and then we'll come straight away, Nadine pleaded. Please, Ma, please. Marion looked over at Ted and then back at them. All right, but get there as soon as you can. Then grim-faced, she went back to the cars. Instead of getting into the one with Ted, she walked past it and sat with Daniel in the back of the second car. Meanwhile, one of the officers was talking to Brian and writing notes in his notebook. Nadine caught a snippet of the conversation. Please don't leave the district, Mr Mullins. We'll be in touch soon. With Martin, behind the wheel, Nadine climbed into the truck. Too much had happened for her to take it all in. 
But the most important thing was to do what they came here for in the first place, rescue Hawkeye. And now Hawkeye was fighting for his life. 